Welcome to 50 Words from Murder, where we delve into the stories behind the headlines. I'm your host, Justin, and today I have a very special guest with me, my friend and fellow uh, TikToker, influencer, whatever they want to call us, the recap with Julie. Um, before I let her introduce herself a little bit more, uh, if you don't follow this creator, if you're on TikTok, uh, you're on Instagram too, right? Yeah. Okay. Go, go follow her. Seriously. If you like my content, you will like her content just as much, maybe more. Um, so definitely go give her a follow, but I'll let you kind of introduce yourself a little bit from here. Thanks, Justin. Um, yeah, like Justin said, I do pretty much the same stuff Justin covers. True crime, celebrity gossip, news of the day, that kind of stuff. Um, I guess I started about a year ago now, um, and I was Julie Louise 1975 first, but now I'm kind of using the recap with Julie, and I just like to do the same stuff Justin does. Just recap these stories, dig into them, and kind of get to the bottom of what's going on. Would you like to have the honor of introducing our topic today? Oh, do you know what? I'm going to leave that with you only because okay. you are the number one person who's been covering that right now. Like you, out of all the creators and, and friends that we kind of have out there that have been covering this, I think you have gotten kind of the inside scoop on this. So I think that should be on you. All right. Fair enough. Well, I appreciate that. Well, today we're going to be talking about a case that has been... Um, on the radar for a lot of people, especially on social media this month, which is that of 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham, who was murdered out of Livingston, Texas by an absolute monster, and we'll get into that more. And, and the nice thing, Julie, and I know it's going to be hard to remember, um, we don't have to use TikTok safe words here. Oh, yes, true. <laughs> so, so for those of y'all who aren't aware of this story, um, Julie, uh, Julie was covering it too, sorry, I've made the, the whole thing here, but... Um, this little girl out of Livingston, Texas, Audrey, there we go, um, she was murdered. We, I guess we haven't gotten an official date yet, but she was murdered, we believe, on the 15th. That's when she went, that's when her disappearance was, was on February. It was the Thursday, or do you think it could be Wednesday evening? We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay, we'll get to that. So, um, so what, we know that she went, we know that she was, she went missing. She was disappeared. Um, by the 15th and the way that we found that out I say we but the family found that out initially was she didn't show up to school uh, there was a roommate slash friend of the family by the name of Don Stephen McDougall who lived on a camper behind the family's house uh, and he was supposed to take her to school to the bus stop that day and she never made it to school and the school sent out a, a message at one o'clock to the parents basically saying that uh, the child wasn't at school. I, I don't know the deal with the dad. I haven't confirmed this, but it's possible the dad works offshore, so maybe he didn't get it till later. But then uh, nobody called to check on her until she didn't get off the bus on the way home from school. So they called the bus barn in the area, which I guess is the area that they keep all the buses. I've never heard it called the bus barn before this case, but nevertheless, and they didn't see her. So then about 7.30 at night, they reported her missing. An Amber Alert was issued. And... And then it, we just, everybody went to a frenzy trying to find this child. So we can go ahead and start, um, we can go ahead and start with the, the hospital Wednesday night. Do you want to give a little background on, I'll tell you, I'm going to let you take the background on McDougal. How's that? Oh, um, so basically this, may, I know we don't judge a book by its cover is what we like to say, but. This, let, let me pause you real quick. I'm going to pause you real quick. Uh, yeah. You might not know this. Um, I am 50% Jewish, and so when somebody has swastikas and SS symbols tattooed on their body, I'm going to judge them by their cover. Yep. Again, Go ahead. I know we don't judge a book by its cover, but when you <laughs> thought probably the most prominent symbol of hate in our entire world in a like brilliant spot on your shoulder so everyone can see, we're going to judge you. So this man has swastikas on his shoulder. Justin, you mentioned that there's another one somewhere on his chest or stomach. As well. His chest down here. Yeah. So he's 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 covered in tattoos, but the problem is of what he's tattooed with. But this man has a rap sheet longer than Santa's like Christmas list. It, it's since like what? We're thinking since he was about 16, he's been in and out of court systems. And he's got everything on there from enticing a child to, you know, driving without a license and just the kind of person you would never never want around your child especially when you're not there and as your your child's babysitter but that that's who this man was um or that's who this father had driving his daughter to and from the bus stop in school allegedly yeah and the father had custody of the child so um the mom didn't 
you know, throughout this case, I was in contact with the maternal grandparents, and I didn't pry because, frankly, it's none of my business. Um, but all all they kind of said was that their daughter had made some pretty poor choices. Um, their daughter has another child um, with a different man that those maternal grandparents have custody of, and apparently, um, the father, Audrey's father, has a son with another woman, and that woman has custody of that son. And then Don Steve McDougall apparently has four children with a protective order against him for them. Of course. Yeah. So, it's like a spider web. It just starts unraveling and, and all of this stuff comes out. It's an absolute sin because the person who suffered in all of this is an 11 year old little girl. Exactly. And you, you mentioned um, the fact that he had an enticing a child charge. I don't know if you saw the video on this. Or the other day. Do you know exactly what happened for him to get that charge? I watched um, you speak of it, um, but other than that, no. Okay. Well, for the listeners, what so there's there's just really a lot to unpack with this guy. Um, you know, he when you go back and look at the record, like you said, we can go back to like sixteen, eighteen, whatever. When I think eighteen or maybe even a little older, we don't know what he did as a juvenile because those records get sealed. So it's possible that it started even sooner. Yeah. Um, he t he tends to have a propensity to go after young girls go after children and um there was apparently a particular place i believe it was 2006 2007 i'm not sure um where he got caught in bed with with with, an, with a 10 year old girl he had taken her pants and her underwear off and i and you know in the video i said because of you know tiktok safety that you know he was preparing to assault her but let's be real he assaulted her by doing that alone that's assault. So he did that, and and I don't know what his initial charge was, but he got it um, knocked down. He he did no low contender on it was the plea, which means that he's saying, "Well, I'm not really guilty, but I'm not not guilty." Yeah, is kind of what that means. And they gave him enticing a child, um, which sounds bad, and I mean it is bad. Obviously, what he did is terrible, but it was not bad enough for him to have to register as a sex offender. It's, it's crazy to me. Like, and who found him? Was that like the little girl's mom or dad? Like who walked in and found that and then had him get a slap on the wrist? Like that's disgusting. I don't know who found him, but I, you know, I will say that as a father of a little girl, he would not have made it to the judge. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, and especially in Texas. I, and I know that there have been cases like there was a case in Texas, not too long ago. Well, I say not too long ago, probably 10, 15 years ago now where a guy walked in on, um, his what was supposed to be his best friend trying to rape his, I think like six or seven year old daughter, and he 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 went and got his gun and shot him, and the police that he went to court he was arrested charged with murder. Um, the judge took one look at it and said, "All right, you were you were defending your child. This is what happened." He's like, "All right, case dismissed," and just knocked it out. So so that's the type of judge that you want. Whatever judge Don Steve McDougall went in front of didn't do that. Yeah, I Just agree. let go. There, there's so many red flags with that. Like, if if that's the case, you should have put him away. Like, he needed help. He needed, he needed to be away from all other children. And now look what what's happened because of it. Yeah, and and I'll say this: Julie is in Canada, so um, I I don't know how y'all's legal system goes with it, but I will say that in in our country, when. A lot of these people get a just a slap on the wrist, and I think that if you're if you're doing something where you're you're harming a child, you're caught harming a child, the the evidence is overwhelming. Like I mean, he was caught red-handed, right? Like, why are you allowing that to be pled down? Yeah. Why is that? Why are you allowing that to be pled down? That needs to go. You don't. That needs. You have to protect your children at yeah. all costs, above anybody else. Get caught like caught stealing milk from you know the corner store. You got caught ruining some little girl's life like that that's completely different exactly yeah. exactly so um but he because of some kind of loophole he was able to get through didn't have to do it now he's also got assault charges right he's got the one in 2019 um and actually this woman who who put that charge on him um came into my live a few nights ago and was telling that story to us and I mean, you've probably seen the video by now too but basically what happened was she was they were friends with McDougal at this point in time, um, and her and the father of her kids, um, McDougal had asked them to drive him over to a friend's house. They said, sure. On the way over, he asked to borrow their cell phone. Um, 
you know, hey, can I make a call real quick? And, you know, just drop me off at the end of the driveway. And he gets out of the thing. He, he's hidden the cell phone at this point uh, in the seats of the car. He gets out and proceeds to go after the, the father of this woman's children and starts beating him, pulls a pipe, a metal pipe out of his pants and starts beating him. So severe injury, you know, he got that. I think it was like, you know, assault, you know, to cause extreme, you know, yeah. extreme injury. So there was that one. And so she was very proud that they put that on there. And, and I, she was convinced that he was going to, you know, sexually assault her. But he, she was, she went and started digging through the seat, found the phone, called 911, told him, hey, the police are on their way. And he apparently took off. Of and then apparently, apparently he also offered to, he's like, hey, man, I feel bad about this. And, and Venmo them like 50 or cash at them like 50 bucks. Oh yeah. Here, please don't report. <laughs> yeah. So they reported him. Um, and then there was another assault case that happened this past, I know more than this. I'm just going recently. Cause if we, I mean, honestly, we could do an entire episode just on this guy's rap sheet. I mean, you okay. really could. Like, I, I don't think I've ever seen a rap sheet that long, to be honest. Like it, it was pages. Like it was crazy. It's long. It's very long. And, um, this other one though, back in August, apparently he had gone, him and some unknown woman went to, somebody's house asked them to jump start the car guy said okay i'll help you jump start the car whether i don't know if he knew him or not some people say he did some people say he didn't. it's irrelevant uh, and while dude is trying to help mcdougall jump start his car he attacks him and stabs him in the back and he survives and he ultimately um and this is gonna be jumping a little bit ahead of myself when i give the whole story on this but uh ultimately the guy ends up reporting you know reporting the assault identifies the wrong guy wrong guy gets arrested gets let out because he didn't do it. The guy, a couple of days later, victim realizes, oh, I did the wrong guy. This is the guy, identifies McDougal, and police are like, no, you're not a credible witness. We're not going to even look at this. But had they arrested him for that August thing when he reported it back in August, then Audrey could still be alive. So it's just another example of the system failing her yet again. It makes you wonder how long he's been living in the trailer and behind Audrey's home. Like, how long has he been around this little girl? Well, so for that, we kind of have an idea because if you look at his arrest record from, I think, 2019, he had a, an address in Pasadena, Texas. So and I think he had another one in 2022, still in Pasadena, Texas, something along those lines. Um, so I don't think very long, but the dad and him had been friends for at least seven years because that their Facebook goes back at least seven years. Oh, true. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Oh. So so the dad is friends with him. Um and here's the thing. I've had people in my comments, I'm sure you have too. Well, maybe the dad didn't know his track record. Dude has fucking swastikas tattooed to his body. Is that not enough? Yeah. You don't need you don't need a track record. If you see that on someone's body, you go the other direction. That's unless Top unless you have the same beliefs as that person. Well, that's that's nail on the head. On top of that, the tattoos he had are clearly prison tattoos. So it's yeah. very and the dad, Josh Cunningham, spent time in prison for assault also, which kind of makes you wonder if you dug deep enough, I bet you that's how they met. Yeah, maybe that's where they hooked up. That would be all right. Because he's, because McDougal's, um, like Josh is turning uh, 30 this year and McDougal's like 43 or 44. Right. So there's a. Do or something, wasn't he? Do what? 42 or 43. Yeah. Yeah. 42 or 40, yeah. Something like that. Sorry, it broke up a little bit. Yeah. Um. So it's a big age gap. Like I'm not hanging around, you know, I'm, I'll am i be for, hold on. I'll be 42 this year and I'm not hanging around 30 years. I, I, you get the point where you forget sometimes your age. I forget my age. Yes, yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I have to be like 82 is too many years ago. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're old. Now. Um, yeah. Right. So anyways, I'm not hanging around 30 year olds, you know, as my, like my best, my best bud. But at the same time, I'm sure there's a lot of emotional immaturity with that. Um, uh, and so a few more things about this guy, just to kind of let you know, um, what you're dealing with. Did you, did you see how he handled his arraignment? Oh, um, how do McDougal did? Yeah. No. Oh, this was fun. Okay. I did this video. You should go watch it. Um, so apparently He's on, he's on watch. And so they gave him, you know, that, the, the suicide schmuck or whatever they put on you. And he decided he was not going to wear it. And so prison guards or jail guards go to open the door, say, Hey, you're, it's time for you to meet with the justice of the peace. Cause that's how they do it there. And it's right in the jail. And then so they just walk him out and dude is butt ass naked. And in the video, they're blurring it, but he's totally naked. And so he gets up, he calls like the schmuck address and he's like laughing and smirking. He's like, like, this is funny to him. 
Do you and, know who else refused to wear that? Was Sam Haskell hmm. Jr. Remember the fellow just a couple months ago who is yeah. in jail um, for killing his entire family, killing his, um, well, his, not his entire family, but his wife and her mother and father um, and putting them, putting them in a dumpster. He refused to wear that suicide vest as well, so he was shirtless in his court appearance. But who, this guy was more than shirtless. He was everythingless. I mean, they had the blur. You had the blurry little boxes. Oh, that's okay. And the guard was like, "Wrap the blanket around you, like, like you know, don't don't disrespect it like this." And so then he goes out. He meets. He's shirtless. He's smirking on the way out to meet the justice of peace. They charge him with cat. They charge him with the capital murder. He's also got an assault charge pending. They ask him if he wants, uh, if he's going to hire his att own attorney or if he needs one. He basically tells them um, he's going to hire his own with, with what money. I don't know, but he's going to hire his own. Uh, but, he th but he's smirking about it. This little girl's dead, and he's he's smirking about it. He thinks it's funny. So, um, you know, sociopathic tendencies. But, yeah, that's, you can see the whole video if you want to. I'll go check it out after. If, if, you're, if you're bored, if you're so inclined. Yeah. Uh, so that gives you the idea of the person that we're dealing with. So now we should talk about little Audrey, right? Because that's who, who needs to be remembered. Yeah. So Audrey, um, you know, that's the family put out a statement. You know, let's go ahead and, and do this. This will give a good introduction to Audrey. And some of this is going to piss you off, too, um, of the family statement. So first off, the mom um, has made, has talked to the press, has, has plenty of statements the dad has been completely quiet the, the grandmother who also lived with him completely quiet the whole side of that family until the vigil had been completely quiet and even then the dad didn't say a word and and i frankly think the dad's going to end up being brought up on charges but that's to be determined um but they released a press release I, i'm guessing today or yesterday it says and here's what it says one week ago on thursday the 15th of february 2024 audrey danielle cunningham was lured under false pretenses which led to the, a senseless act of violence occurring and ultimately to her death. Tragically, Audrey's death occurred at the hands of a monster we thought was a friend only 10 days after her 11th birthday. Oh, oh yeah. Audrey Cunningham was a charismatic, beautiful, talented, and kind young lady. She loved singing, dancing, reading, and painting. She was even learning the skills of a tattoo artist. I'm going to pause this right here. So for those of y'all who, who don't know about this case, you're just hearing about it, there was a video going around where this girl, who's obviously 10 at the time she's doing this, um, somebody bought her special pink gloves to let her do it. Um, and, and I believe it's McDougal. Some people said it could be the dad. You can't really see, but you can tell, regardless of whoever she's tattooing, she's tattooing the upper thigh of an adult man. Yes. Um, and if he's wearing underwear, which I hope he is, it's, it's definitely a tidy whitey kind of guy because there's nothing that you can see in the thing. And, and look, McDo these guys look like like tidy whitey kind of guys. They just do. So um any such disturbing image. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, you, if I have to think about it, you have to think about it. So um anyways, I I'm gonna go out and say that really you're you're teaching her the ways of a tattoo artist. You're it's it's fucking grooming is what it is. It's like, hey, little girl it's okay i trust you with my body let me take my pants off and you tattoo my upper thigh there is nothing okay about this but that's that part's not in the press release i just paused there so moving on yeah. most of all caring for and playing with animals was her was her passion audrey's aspirations were to become a veterinarian or an animal trainer every day audrey was out taking care of our pets and walking our dogs she would even walk the dogs of neighbors in the subdivision she touched so many lives and filled them with joy and happiness that was infectious. She had so much energy and brought a passion to everything she did. Audrey will be missed by a great many people. The Munch and Cunningham families are devastated and grieving for what happened to our little ray of sunshine, Audrey. We are being attacked and criticized on social media platforms for showing compassion and mercy to this formerly incarcerated person. Our interactions with this person, we're going to pause, don't worry, I see your face. Yeah. But our interactions with this person were a result of our faith, which teaches us to give our fellow man a second chance. I'm just going to let you talk. There's so much to say there. Let, what should we unpack first? Um, I completely agree. People deserve a second chance. This wouldn't have been his second chance. This would have been his 622nd chance, if you look at his rap sheet. But that tattoo tells it, me everything. Nobody, uh, this might sound terrible, but 
nobody deserves a second chance if you're wearing that tattoo on your body. You don't even deserve a first chance. That it's Agreed. there's nothing worse. Like it's it's a symbol of absolute hate. And to have that on your body tells you everything you need to know. I, and I hate to do that for the family. I know they've lost Audrey and I know they trusted this man, um, which is so unfortunate. But look what was on his body. That Enough said. He had the biggest symbol of hate you could ever have on your body. Like, and it was big. End of story. Yeah. It, and it was big. Darker than all the other tattoos. Like, he wanted that to stand out. He He is most likely a racist, disgusting man. Man, a pedophile. Yeah. And a rapist. And, you know. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. Yeah. This so, was, we'll, we'll, you know, this, this man that committed, you know, I don't know, robbed a home or something, went to prison, and he gets out and you take him and, you know, give him a second chance. That's not, that's not the story here. And that's, that's kind of what they're portraying that as. That is not the case at all. When you see his rap sheet, it tells you everything. And if they hadn't seen the rap sheet, okay, great. You saw him with his shirt off because we all did. It's on his Facebook. He he promotes that picture. He's proud of it. So you knew what was on his body. So I'm sorry, but no, <laughs> no. no he, he, yeah, he, he likes to sport tank tops or go shirtless. He thinks this five foot eight dude Thinks that he is, he is he's five eight by the way he's five eight this five foot eight normally we say we love a short king but we don't love this guy he is McDouchebag but um anyways he he constantly has it out there he also has one on his chest like kind of like right you know um like where his the bottom of his rib cage where they kind of meet uh and then like I said under somebody said to me I think it was underneath that swastika it's kind of there I think it's the arm don't hold me to this but he also had the SS symbol oh, it wouldn't surprise me I mean why wouldn't you if you had the other one And here's the thing even in the real day the real Nazi times this man's too stupid to have been in the SS anyways so just it's just gross I, I that no he should never have been around a child absolutely never like it, especially alone like and, and I I hate to even think about what that little girl went through with him before this day. Like I, I, you know, it's not the first time that something happened to her. No, you know, it's not. No, no. It's something, something happened that he, he decided to end it that morning, but we don't know why or what happened, but you know, it wasn't the first time. Or the night before. Well, yeah, that's what I'm kind of wondering. So, um, we'll get to that. So, yeah, uh, we should talk about on, yeah, this is, this, this, well, we're sort of almost done with it. Um, I actually, this will be the last part that they say, then they go on to start thanking and acknowledging everybody who helped. Um, so then it says, unfortunately, the system failed us due to a loophole in the sex offender registration system. Don Steve McDougall had a history of disrespect for young female children. That's the way to put it. He had a disrespect for right. young female children. That's, that's a word. That's a way that you can word it, I suppose. Um, but I'm oh, sorry, you broke up. Say that again. He wasn't calling them names. That it wasn't no. what he was doing. No, no, I agree with you. Um, but it didn't show up when we checked the registry before allowing him to stay in the old camper in our backyard while he tried to start a new life. Had we been aware of what we know now, this man would have never set foot on our property much less been a part of our little girl's life. I'm going to say bullshit. I was just going to say that. I called BS. You didn't check a registry on this man. There's no way. What happened was, is, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to go ahead and do what we do. What I, what I, I almost never do. I'm going to go ahead and make a big old speculation right now. Okay. They met somewhere. They bonded over their hatred, their, their, their love of hate. I think their love of hate. Yeah. And, 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 that, and that was good. Hey, this guy's got the values that I see in a friend. He hates, I I hate minorities. He hates minorities. We're going to be the best of friends. Yeah. You know? Hang out in the trailer in my backyard. Yeah, well, you can live there. That That's how that went down. That's what went down. And he didn't think anything. But I'll, I'll go a step further. And I've said this in tons of my videos. I'll say, I say this as a man. Don't let men watch your kids. Just don't let men ever watch your kids. That's a general rule. And you want to come after me? You know what? Find me on X. Find me on Instagram. Send me the message and I will go toe to toe with you as to why. But don't ever let men watch your kids. Especially when they have swastikas tattooed on their body. Yeah. 
And there's no way you looked him up on a registry without putting his name in Google first. Because as soon as you put his name in Google, that rap sheet comes up. So that's such BS. You did not specifically type in sex offender list and put him in there without Googling. Like you, no, no, absolutely not. No, they're trying to cover the tracks right now because they're. Yeah. So and no, I'm going to be a little devil's advocate here. I, I know probably what they're feeling right now. Everybody's after them and they know they made a huge mistake and they trusted this man, and I completely believe that they trusted this man, and they absolutely shouldn't have. So now they're trying to backpedal and make it look better, and they can blame the fact that the legal system dropped the ball with this and didn't put him on the registry list and be like, we tried, we looked at the registry list. No, you didn't. Like, don't don't cop that. There's no, there's absolutely no way you looked up a registry list. Like, that is not a normal thing for people to do. You met this man, and you guys all liked him. He had, you know, Whatever kind of personality you were looking for, he had it, and he moved into your backyard. Like he became part of your family. Yeah, he did. And there's the, again, and we can keep saying, and again, again, and again, and again, swastikas. He had swastikas on him. Exactly. I don't want people to have those views around my child. That that you know? history you needed to look up. What kind of tattoo is that? A swastika? Never mind. I'm out. Yeah, you you exactly. You you're done. And so but he thought that this was good influence for his his daughter and and whatever. So, um Anyways, it's just uh I will say this. I feel I feel bad for the mom's side. Okay? And I know that people are going to jump at me for that. I feel zero nothing for the dad side. And I'll tell you why I feel bad for the mom side. The mom made whatever mistakes that the mom made, and I've heard things, but I can't, you know, verify this. I'm not going to go ahead and start spreading rumors on a podcast. But um, whatever the mom's mistakes that she made, she lost custody of Audrey at two, and she she never got her back. And I think this will be a good segue into the text messages in a second. But um, the mom didn't have parental rights. The mom didn't have custody. So the mom had no say on who her child was hanging out with at all. That is a different, there's a different type of blame there for that. And there's a different type of, of, of hole you can go down with that, but it's not the person. She's not the person that let this guy move into their house was befriended them and let this guy take them, take their daughter to school. She had no choice in it. Okay. Yeah. Because she lost custody. Now, did she have choices in what caused her to lose her custody? Absolutely. Yeah. But she had choices. But on top of that, um, she's been on the news. She was looking for her kid. The dad never did once. And I don't care what's going on. You know, we saw it with the Petito Schmidt family. We saw it with, you know, you, you cover a lot of the stuff with uh, so many other victims, with the McCanns, with, you know, the Benet, fa you know, Jean Benet Ramsey family. They all, no matter what kind of hate they get, they're still out there advocating for justice for their kid this guy hasn't said a single fucking word why yeah oh he knows he knows this is his partially his fault partially yeah. it's 100 well, well i mean yeah himself. that's what i mean partially like he might yeah. not have you know done what happened done to audrey what was done uh but he allowed it to he, he basically allowed it to take place yeah he did he allowed it to take place and uh I have a feeling it wasn't, I'm with you, I have a feeling it wasn't the first time, yeah. you know, whether she said something or she didn't to her dad, um, there are rumors out there that her dad was abusive in that way as well. I don't know if that's true, I'm not going to come out and make that statement, but again, birds of a feather, right? So, um, I have no, I don't feel bad for the dad at all, at all with this, because if you cared to me. I think that you'd be out there, and I'm not trying to judge why people grieve, but you would be out there, especially when she was missing, advocating to help find your child, unless you're like Roberta Laundry and already know what happened. So there's no reason for you to go out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a Gary Petito reference for those who don't know. But anyways, so let's talk about the text messages I talked about a minute ago. The mom and Stephen McDougal. Uh, I don't have them pulled up, but you know what? I I have them memorized enough. Hey, my now. <laughs> yeah, um, times now. Okay, so the two the two things that I well basically to give y'all a background who's listening is there was a the morning um, that Audrey was reported to be dis you know to disappear and be missing. Uh, Stephen McDougal was texting the mom, 
trying to arrange a meeting, basically um, behind the dad's back. And the mom clearly wants to see her. The way I read these text messages, and if you disagree with me, Julie, you know, chime in. But the way that I read these text messages, this was a mom who wants to see her child trying to get her life together, but she's concerned that if she does this and the dad, she calls him Lucky, that's his, his nickname. But if Lucky finds out, she's going to like, it's going to basically screw all of her chances of having any type of custody or parental agreement. And so she's very hesitant. Yeah, she's, she's worried. She's definitely concerned that she's going to get herself in trouble with this. You can tell. Yeah, but he's texting with her. And then he goes on to say a couple things. Um, the first thing, you know, I'm going to come back to this, the first thing he said second. But the one that I'm going to say prior or after that was he's like, hey, I'm on your side. On that thing. He said, hey, I'm on your side. This is the guy who's supposed to be friends with the dad. Yeah. I was raised by a narcissist. That is a, manipula uh, a manipulation tactic if I've ever seen one. Hey, you can trust me. I'm on your side. I'm a good guy. Um, yeah, I'm a good guy with my swastikas on my chest and arms. Um, look at me. Uh, and the other one that just... I mean, not just a red flag. This was this was like a whole bunch of red flags, with um, like an orchestra playing behind it. That was like, I'm your daughter's favorite person. Yeah, she would tell. That was the worst line I think as a parent you could ever hear some strange swastika tattooed man ta like say to you, "I'm your daughter's favorite person." She won't tell. Yeah. How do you know she won't tell? Uh, yeah. And the fact that he was telling her she couldn't bring her fiance with her when she was meeting them. I, I know why I think that is. Why do you think that was? Um, so I, I guess I'll bring this up now, but I wonder if. Yeah. And we're going to have technical difficulties real quick. So I, this is, I'm just speculating, but as soon as this kind of all came out, my thoughts were that he was trying to set the mother up as a scapegoat. So he was going to do something with Audrey on that Thursday morning because he had done something to her Tuesday night and he knew he had to get rid of her. And I feel like he was setting this up with the mother so that he could be like, well, I took her to the bus stop and she was going to meet the mother. Like maybe the mom's got her. Like I completely thought that. Now I, I did see on like some of the, the Facebook sites that were helped trying to find Audrey, some people saying that she was seen at like between 6.30 and 7 Thursday morning, but I've never seen that verified. I only saw that on those Facebook groups. So I wonder if he did something to her Wednesday evening. I wonder too if he did um, that as well. I did also. I think not just escape that maybe she's got him. I've kind of thought that um, that perhaps he was planning on killing both of them. Oh, okay. Making it look like a murder suicide. Consider that. Make it look like a murder suicide. Like if I got you know, and I can't have you, no one can have you, kind of thing, and I don't know unhinged um or something along on along those lines but um I'm, I'm assuming with the investigation we'll be able to know more like they'll be able to know if audrey was you know killed at her home if she was killed in the vehicle like you know and, and really i mean what happened from the time like i think it was like 6 30 till 8 is what they were trying to find footage of the the vehicle for so like what happened between 6 30 and 8 in the morning that you ended up killing an 11 year old little girl like it just it doesn't make oh, sense she's dead first because they, they unless you were dead first because the cameras that i if i'm remembering why and i don't have this open in front of me where you know because it's so fresh we're doing this off the top of our heads yeah. i believe that the cameras that caught didn't show any little girl in his suburban so unless she was in the back like laying down already because she was gone right. um or like you know maybe like you said maybe was i mean yeah i i can't i hate them about the say what i'm going to say but maybe you know it was valentine's day the day before and maybe he thought it was some kind of you know, you know what i don't like it's gross it gives the total ick yeah. but you know what i'm saying yeah without me saying anymore do i have to i don't want to go anymore and say any more of that oh. but 
you know, maybe something went too far and, you know, whatever. And, but, um, although didn't, they did find allegedly her pants though, by the water, didn't they? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe something did happen down by the water. But the but the thing is, would wouldn't it be more likely that he would do something to her, not in the open? I know that's what I was thinking. Like at the home, like he doesn't or in, the, have, or in his car. He didn't have to. Although no, because she lived with the grandmother as well. Like she was, there was other family in that home. So I guess maybe he couldn't have done it in the home itself. In his trailer, he could have. But perhaps that's what happened. He took her down to the river. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and a suburban. A, sur a suburban's big. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so after. Kind of over that. So when they, when they ended up finding Audrey, part of the reason they were able to find her was um, they found her pants on, uh, on the edge of the, of the river. So they, they knew kind of where to look. Yeah, and we had we're just this this this, pot, this episode has no order at all or structure. We're just we're just having a conversation. So, but you know, most of your followers I think are good with that. So, um, they know they know how I am. I'm all over the place. But no, you're right. So they found a backpack initially um, in a different location, and then um, they brought him out. He was apparently giving locations, things like that, and this was one location that they did bring him to, but. Um, it didn't sound like he was admitting anything. The way that they ended up figuring this out was uh, cell phone pings, the cameras that did catch him. You asked about what happened in that morning. Well, apparently he was very dirty when he went to a mechanic shop to get, I think, an air filter for his car. Um, and then when he went to the gas station later, he was in seeing at the Exxon gas station a little bit later um, in the morning, and he was all cleaned up by then. And then he saw the Amber Alert come across the screen, and he quickly scurried out. Mm. Uh, that I don't know if you saw that, but that happened. Um, and then he just, I guess he just, you know, people started looking for him. He eventually got questioned. He got let go. He wasn't picked up at that point. Um, you know, and so and if that's what they had at that point. Then several days later, they do find her pants. Um, and then they find her. And apparently she was very difficult to find. Um, so it was actually kind of interesting. I, if you haven't watched or heard the Nancy Grace thing on the ship, I, it's really good. Um, you should have, because she brings in the investigators and part of EquiSearch who was out there looking for her. And yeah. apparently the guy, does, he's, he's an excellent at sonar, and he picked up what looked to be a body one day, but then the river, the currents worked. Because this river has been, um, you know, the Trinity River has been just flowing like super high volume. Um, and so he couldn't really make anything out. He's actually famous for finding these these girls. Yeah. Like he's on he, um I can't think right now what the documentary is called, but there's a documentary. Um it's the Texas Killing Fields, I think it's called. Um and he he's in that and he's the one that's finding and searching for these girls because his daughter was actually one of them. So his daughter, that's tragic. Yeah. yeah, his daughter that's tragic. Was, yeah, murdered and and he hasn't found the killer. So this is what he's done. He's dedicated his life to this, and he ended up finding Audrey. It's very much like a John Walsh story. Uh, Basically, yeah. that's that's a that could be a different podcast. Maybe that's one that we do. Yeah. When we do ours. Um, and that that is a hint for anybody listening. Um, but anyway, so the first day he kind of makes it up. They have to shut it down. The net. At that point, they made the decision to start slowing the flow of water into the reservoir, letting some of it out, letting the water level down. He's trying and trying and trying to find her, and finally he does. And when they do, the reason that it turns out it was so hard to find her, and this was, this was, part, I don't, I don't want to call it his mistake, but tr it was his mistake, McDougal's mistake in trying to hide evidence of her body was he decided to tie her to a rock. He slipped with, Yeah, with a rope, by the way, that was consistent with the same rope that they saw in his truck during a traffic stop two days prior to her disappearance, okay? Uh, and people were like, well, the police had a good eye. They remember that. I think they went back and checked body cam footage from that stop. That's how I think they saw it. But uh, nevertheless, it doesn't matter. They find the body. They pull her out. She's tied to a rock. So, and this is not a fun image, guys, but she's apparently like, she's not laying peacefully at the bottom of a riverbed. She is swirling around nonstop in high current water. Okay. So they pull her out. They, they get her to, uh, you know, 
the the medical examiner where I guess she probably she might still be there um, as we record this. So the funeral's next next week sometime. Um, but we learned that she died of blunt force trauma, yeah. and that's all we've been told at this point officially. And that she didn't have her pants on. And that she didn't have her pants on. And part of it is, you know, the discussion is, did he, uh, well, you know, let's just say, you know, let's just say what it is. Did he rape her in his, in his truck? Did he rape her down by the river? Did he do it the day before? Um, you know, and then if to me, the truck or the river makes sense because then he's like, it's like he discards her like she's trash. Yeah. That's what it is like, oh, you know, throw the pants away, throw this away. I got what I wanted. And I think wasn't his story. Didn't he tell the police that he was fishing that morning? So they got, yeah. to, they said, well, take us where you're fishing. And that's, that's why he was taken to that area. He wasn't admitting to any of this, but he, they were trying to take him to all the spots he was claiming he was at. And that's, yeah. Um, they found her. I apparently learned also from the Nancy Grace thing that, so his, he's got a 2003 uh, Suburban, or I've said this a bunch of times, it's 21 years old. Okay. It's an old car. Apparently OnStar existed. Oh, no way. Yeah. Apparently it existed, and his Chuck's got it. Well, that's good piece, a piece, good piece of information. It's a great piece of information and a great piece of evidence, and they've already confirmed that they'll be able to track where that vehicle went. Okay, that's good. I think they have a lot of camera camera footage as well from the sounds of it. Yeah, and it, it all lines up to him, the rope, everything. I mean, he's you've got all the evidence you need, minus catching him in the act. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So... They fish her out. She's got no pants on. Um, she's been swirling around for days. And let's... This horrible image is in my head, so it's got to be in your head now, too. Because Nancy Grace was talking about this, and we were talking about, you know, can they get him on sexual assault? Because here's the thing. He's facing capital murder, right? So he's either going to get life in prison. If and when he's found guilty, he's going to get life in prison or um, the death penalty. That's what he's... Those are, those are the choices. That's what he's up against. Um, he's in Texas. Texas uses their death penalty. And I... Really confident that's where they're going to go go for on it. However, even though it wouldn't necessarily make a difference on sentencing, I'd like if he if he sexually assaulted her, I think that he needs to have that charge. So while he's in prison, people know that he had that charge. I that to young children. Yeah, exactly. To a to a child who just she just turned eleven. She was a baby, right? Yeah. Um, and she. <laughs> Again, I don't want to talk about this. This is so terrible. But they were talking about the, the situation and her being in the water. Could they still be able to extract DNA? And obviously, I'm not a woman, but I have a wife and I have a daughter and I'm not stupid. So I know that, you know, if a woman gets into a swimming pool, a bathtub, hot tub, whatever, water doesn't just like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like there's an open, like a bucket, right? It's not like water goes in there. But apparently, so that's what she, you know, so Nancy Grace is talking about that. And the medical examiner they have on says, well... Had she been um, basically raped right before he killed her, she, he would have, she would have been dilated. And and after I get it, it's not a fun conversation. I'm very uncomfortable having this conversation. Um, but that could have then caused water with swirling around to wash any type of evidence out. Oh no! Unless it happens to be in the truck. Or and her pants were. Well, the pants were soaked though, so that's going to be a big if. Oh. True too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be. Hard. I just see. You. I, I mean, finding that that evidence is going to be hard. I'm hoping he was dumb enough to do it in his truck. Yeah, maybe. Because then you'll find it there. It's somewhere. It's just a matter of where. Yeah. Bought. At the same time, though, had had it been done before, they could also, you know, if they're doing searches, they could check Audrey's bed. They could check whatever in the camper because it probably wasn't the first time, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine, you know, the first time being the last time. I, I just, I think something happened that ended her life that time. Yeah. I think so too. Maybe she threatened to tell. There were other rumors, which I'm not going to entertain on a podcast because I don't need that going out there, but I'll tell you offline. Um, but yeah, it's, it's shitty. It's a whole shitty, it's a big bunch of shitty situation. This child was failed. She was given shitty parents from the beginning, you know, because she should have been with her mom. You know, that's at the end of the day. 
she should have been with her mom. Her mom couldn't break whatever she had going on. And look, I, I get it. I'm assuming, I'm making the assumption that it was drugs. I don't know that to be true. It's my opinion. But, and I know that, uh, look, I know that addiction is a disease. I know that it's hard. But this kid, she lost custody of this kid at two years old. Audrey just turned 11. You've had time to get your life together. You've had a decade. God, she may not have, but Audrey should have been in a safer environment, like foster home. Yeah. Because like, obviously her dad was not a good environment for her to be either. So, No, he wasn't. He was the lesson of two years. Her bed was in the living room of their house. Her bed was in the literal living room yeah. of the house. Like, she didn't even have... You know, a, a, a 10, 11 year old girl doesn't even have her own private space to get dressed, to change, to do, you know, to, to do, you know, do anything, just be alone with her own thoughts or do her homework. She was out in the open 100% of the time, accessible to this asshole who lived on their property. Uh, yeah, not good. It's not good. Um, and now Texas, however, feels bad about the situation. So they're starting Audrey's Law. Have you heard about Audrey's Law? Oh, I haven't yet. Yeah, so they're apparently the drawing legislation. I can't get the details of it because I don't know what the details are going to be yet, but they're basically wanting to close these loopholes and make it so shit like this can't happen again, where these offenders can't play it down, that they're going to have to be held fully accountable. But it's it's the shitty part about it is that it takes the death, the violent death of a child exactly. for you to want to implement change. It, it's that way with everything. It it takes someone dying before people wake up and see what happened or what what could have not happened had you have you know done taken precautions and followed through on something. Yeah, and maybe held him in jail the first six hundred times you arrested him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the twentieth charge you probably should have looked at it a little closer. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, I know that you're not in the U.S. I don't know if you guys have this in Canada, but this I thought there was supposed to be like a three strikes in your outlaw. You get hit with three felonies. And you're just, you're in prison forever now. I And like, how do you go in front of the judge and him look at this, like, open up this list and the, you know, the, the scroll drops to your feet because it's so long and be like, yeah, we'll play it down. Like, how do you do that as a judge? Like, it, it makes no sense. And and I do understand yeah. a lot of charges were, quote, unquote, minor, um, you know, driving without a license and things like that. Maybe they can say yeah. minor. But when you add all of that up, like he didn't care about the law at all. Like he was laughing at it. Yeah. And yeah, those are minor. And you're right when you add them up. But there's also some DUIs, DWIs. There was um, obviously the assault charges, meth. You, you can just tell from looking at it, he was just a bad dude. Like he was just a scary guy. Yeah, he, he is, a, he is a, a defective human being. Yeah. And you can barely call him a human being. He, he there's There's... He is, he is a waste of air. He is a waste of space. He is a waste of everything. Agreed. Agreed. That exists. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's, it's, it's a tragic case. It really is. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this one in this episode, because I did have another one planned, kind of, um, is because I think that this kind of stuff needs awareness. You know, women and children in our country get so screwed. You know, so there's a case. I'm going to kind of go off off topic for a moment. I don't know if you, you know this case. Crime Dive um, by Jess did this case. I'm going to do a video on it too, I think. There was a girl in Utah. Um, this is so fucked up. There's a girl in Utah. She is uh, mentally disabled. She's disabled, m mentally disabled. She's, in the, her she's 30 years old. Her body looks like an 8-year-old, and she's got the mentality of a uh, toddler. And she was having a bunch of, you know where the story's going. I, you already know where this is going. But um, she started seizing a lot. Like she had seizures already. They weren't terrible, but she started seizing a lot. And so at the doctor's recommendation, she was like, hey, you know, put a camera in her room, see kind of what's going on, like what's maybe triggering it. And what she caught was her husband, the girl's stepdad. This is a completely immobile girl, completely immobile person, right? He's taking her off her bed. He's taking her clothes off. He's taking her diaper off. And raping her, and then putting her back, regetting her dress, putting her diaper back on, and putting her back. And her, she was seizing because it was the only communication her body could have. But you know, here's the thing: he's got to go to trial. But here's what's really fucked up. Okay, this this is where it gets. Real, I mean, it's all very fucked up. But here's where it gets even more fucked up. Okay, so apparently in Utah, if you're an adult, if you if you rape a child, it's mandatory jail time. It is not mandatory jail time in Utah if you rape an adult. 
And since she is an adult, I don't know what he's going to end up getting. But he could not. He could pop away from this with no prison time. Utah, what is happening there? What kind of law is that? Uh, it's the same type of law that allows somebody like Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt to be sentenced between four and 60 years, depending on what a panel says, and then you go in front of that panel every four years, and then you can't do more than 30 years if you're doing conceptual, so you're really watching for it. It's, it's just, that's the same state. I don't understand at all. No, there's no sense. Their, their laws are, are insane, and so now they're looking to change laws on that for disabled people who are, might be in the mental, you know, it's just, but everything is so reactive. God. It's it's so it's so disgusting. And I think yeah. I cover so many of these stories because I feel like there needs to be voices out there. People need to be aware of these stories to give these people voices. But I mean it is just the most depressing shit ever. I I hate cover I hate covering them. Yeah, uh, I know. But it's important that we do, and it's important that people like learn from this and that change happens because of this. Yeah, because there was a time where this stuff happened and it was brushed under the rug and nobody talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Not even that long ago. So, well, I don't know if there's anything else to say about this case. I think she's going to be buried March 1st, I think, is when the funeral is, March 2nd. Um, they started a memorial scholarship fund. That is real, by the way. Um, the grandparents sent, sent me the information on that. So, that is legit. Um, I posted the information for that on my Instagram for anybody who's interested, but it's called the Audrey Cunningham Memorial Scholarship Fund. Um, if that's something that you want to donate to, uh, if I can find a link for it, I'll put it on my link tree as well. But other than that, you know, if you see somebody in the community and you see signs, you see somebody, you know, who guy with a bunch of swastikas hanging around little kids, maybe make a phone call to somebody, you know, somebody. I, and, and it's hard because I, maybe people did call. Maybe they did. But you know the thing is, had he actually been registered as an SO, they would have somebody would have come over eventually and suspected him. Expected it, they would have been like, "Why the fuck are you around this 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 ten year old kid?" Yeah, then something could have could have happened. Yeah, could have been done. About it's it. just, it's all like, it's just it's almost like Final Destination, you know, kind of stuff. It's just like everything failed just right for this girl to die. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody failed her. Everybody failed her. So, on that note, I guess that's... Do you have anything else you want to add to it? or? No, I think that was good, Justin. Thank you so much for having me on. This was really uh, mm. incredible. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Thank you for coming on, especially in short notice and talking about such a depressing case before I know you get ready to go to bed. Yeah, I should clarify. Enjoyable is the wrong word for it. Enjoyable, I'm saying, because it's my first podcast, and I enjoyed doing that with you, but the topic's awful. No, I get. I got what you meant. I know what you mean. It's it's nice to talk about and spread awareness. And and for those of y'all who might not have gotten the hint earlier, let me give y'all a much bigger hint: is that Julie and I are talking about doing uh, another podcast uh, together outside of this one would still exist, but outside of this one, um, I don't know. Probably starting in the next few months. I'm almost wondering if we need to wait until you're you're on summer break. But yeah, that that would work too, just because of our time difference. Yeah, she's for those of y'all who don't know, she's on Atlantic time, which I had never heard of until I met her. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's because we're on the east coast of Canada in <clears throat> provinces, and they put us on Atlantic time for some reason. Even though right next to us is Ontario, which is east or um, eastern, and then Maine as well. Well, for the record, I'm in Nashville, and we should totally be on Eastern time. Oh yeah. Well. I see, I don't know where the borders are. are, are it, gets dark, it gets dark here at four o'clock in the in the winter. Get dark, to, it gets dark at four o'clock. Oh, okay. Because what time is it for you right now? Uh, seven fifty-two. Yeah, not, we were two hours off. That's right, two hours. Yeah, off. yeah. So, weird. all right. Well, I appreciate you having you on, and we'll uh, definitely do this again. Awesome. All right, well, everybody, um, thank you guys for tuning in. We will see y'all next month with another episode.